All right, boys and girls, it's early on a Saturday and I got my coffee. And today we're gonna tackle that one thing that has been the biggest pain to me. We're gonna tear into the transmission. of you who've been following my channel may remember I've been having a lot of trouble with this. Now with the install today for the uh, performance automatic shift kit in the valve body, we're hoping that rectifies this issue. Fingers crossed. All right, so first of all, we open everything up and we have some pretty makeshift instructions that look like they were drawn out by hand. Not exactly the best, but with me having some familiarity to these transmissions, I think we'll be just fine. As you can tell, it's still a little chilly out here. I'm just prepping everything for the day. So we're gonna move these. Then it comes with basically everything that comes in a J-Mod. It's gonna come with your gaskets and it's gonna come with your new springs. It gives you in the instructions uh, where to drill, what to drill. So, yep, basically a J-Mod in there, but that's all right, as long as it helps. Now, I will say I've never had a problem with uh, Performance Automatics parts. I've used them quite a few times, but this kit, the instructions in it are really lackluster. Uh, they don't really have any torque specs for reinstallation of the valve body. I mean, none of that stuff. So we're gonna have to get on Ford's website and find the exact uh, inch pound, you know, installation uh, torque specs. And might as well go ahead and get fluid filter. I mean, you're in there. Go ahead and tackle it, knock it out. So also you're gonna need some basic tools. Uh, from what I remember, some good heavy duty snap ring pliers, uh, maybe a bottle jack to compress accumulator pistons, and um, just little things like that, basic hand tools and whatnot. Wanna get some uh, brake clean, something you wanna clean everything up real well. So we're gonna go ahead and grab all the stuff we need. We're gonna get a torque wrench. We're gonna hit up Harbor Freight. Love the place because I use the tools once, pitch them. And um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this day warm up and go get the stuff we need and we'll be back here shortly. All right, so just to let you guys know, I did a quick internet search and I was able to find the uh, torque specs on the valve body as well as the torque uh, sequence. So I'm gonna go ahead and post that image now and let you guys go ahead and pause it or screenshot so that way you have it for yourselves. All right, so now we've got the valve body out. Here's what everything looks like in there. So we're gonna be popping those accumulator piston areas and everything out. So now that that's out, we're gonna do the modification of the valve body, change the springs out, and then we'll uh, be reassembling it. And now you guys have all the torque specs, so you should be good. Here's the valve body. I just wanted to show you guys so you can see the factory part numbers on the gaskets and stuff. So doesn't look like this thing's ever been torn into. And you can see we had some build up right here from the clutch pack, so. It does have some wear, but that's to be expected, 160,000 miles. You know, I don't know how long the trans will last after all of this, especially me beating the crap out of it, but we'll find out and we'll still have some fun with it either way. <laughs> all right, so now having the instructions, it shows you where all the uh, check balls go. So you're gonna go with one, two, three, four, Number five is going to be hidden in here. And then six is right here in like a little slider. So it bounces back and forth. And seven and eight. This is going to be your drain back valve. We'll be tearing these apart to uh, replace springs and stuff in there as well. So there's where we are so far with the plate removed. 
Also, when you remove the separator plate, there's a gasket on each side of it, and it's gonna be caked on there pretty well. So when you go to remove that, be very careful not to scratch the separator plate because you'll be drilling it, but any scratches in it might leak from passage to passage. All right, and the first part of the instruction said release the uh, pressure valve. Uh, what it is, a little clip in here, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull that clip up and it'll spring out. And this is the clip right here. And it'll sit down in here like so. And the instructions say to replace this spring with the blue one provided. So that's our blue one. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that, reinstall this all back together in here and left the clip. And then we're gonna move on to the next one. All right, so it's gonna be a little tough to hold this, but we got the blue spring right here, ready to go back in. And we'll go to install this and you have to be careful you don't scratch the bore or anything and what we'll do is we'll push this all the way in i'll use the end of um say a uh, extension push that in and then lock that little clip right back in there to hold that in place and then we'll be done with this part of it and now that is back installed with the clip in place as you can see the blue spring is well there it is uh, you can see the blue spring is compressed in there and it'll be recessed in there quite a bit. So now we're gonna move on to the next. Now this right here is the next step. It's gonna be a little bit tougher. Um, it's got a little flat piece in here, and as you can see, it's got a little spring in there. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to lift this flat out of here, remove that spring, and replace it with the instructions say to replace it with the plain spring. That would be the small one right here. Um, now it also says in the instructions if you don't have a spring in this spot Then don't worry about um, Installing one just leave the spring out. So ours has it. So we're going to be replacing that Okay, so now we got the old one out of there as You can see in the bore there So now what we're going to do is we're going to install the new spring compress it and push that flat blade back in there And there's the flat blade with the old spring right there. So that's next all right, and step four says replace the 3-4 capacity modulator valve spring with the yellow spring provided. Obviously, we have the yellow spring right there. It's a little one. So when you flip the instructions over in step number four, it's right here. So the way it fits in, it's going to be your second hole down. It's going to be right here. It's going to be another one of those little lock tabs like we just had on the last one. So what we'll have to do is compress the spring, slide that up, and your spring is going to be in there. So, yep, that's our next step. Go ahead and swap that one out and then reinstall. And also to note, as you can see here, this would be the direction as everything would go in. It's telling you to replace the back spring. So you're going to have one of those clips right here. But this is your clip for the spring that's behind it. The other spring you're going to be replacing is actually in here. So all this has to come out to get to this one. All right, so now we have that apart. I left the back piece in because it doesn't really need to come out, but here's our new yellow spring. It will slide into there like so. Then this piece will slide in. And I'll be using that to compress the yellow spring to go ahead and put that clip back into here. So that way, we'll be straight. Once we get that in, then we install that plunger all the way, then this particular spring, and then that lock clip there. All right, we have that all back together now, as you can see here and here, so we're good. Now, we get to the drilling part. So, going to A, B, C, D, and E, we're gonna be looking for, we're gonna be using a let's see, 760 fourths, then an eighth inch, and then a 330 seconds. So, those are the three drill bits you're gonna need. All right, so I have everything marked. Uh, here's hole A, it's gonna be 7 64ths. Then hole B is gonna be 7 64ths. C is 1 8th, and you can see where it's at here. D, on mine, it has the slot. So it says if it's slotted or um, the same size or larger as the um, uh, eighth inch drill bit, then to leave it alone. So this we don't have to mess with, leave as is. And E is right below it, 330 seconds. So this seems to be for our 70W trans, 
but it seems to have the AODE plate, as you can see, indicated by the slot where the other doesn't have it. So they must have done that mid-year because this is a 2000 model. Another thing, guys, I can't stress to you enough is to make sure when you are drilling these to make sure you have a good support underneath. You don't want to bend or burr this plate up because if you do, it's pretty much trash. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill it on a block of wood on these holes so that way I know I have stability behind it. And I'm going to deburr it with some uh, Scotch-Brite afterwards to make sure we're good to go. All right, now we have them all drilled. Everything's cleaned off. Like I said, I cleaned it with some scotch Bright because there will be some corrosion or stuff built up on here. Um, transmission fluid is just a high detergent oil, so it may leave some stuff like this. And it's not a big deal as long as it feels good and flat, so you're good to go. So now, reassembly of this with the check balls. Make sure everything's clean, all your passages. Here's your drain back valve, your screens, filters uh, right in here. So let's get it back together and start working on the accumulator pistons. All right, so now that we got everything back together, um, these bolts here, this one, don't forget that one. I almost lost that one. But uh, all these bolts right here that hold the separated plate together, they are 9 to 11 newton meters, which is like 80 to 100 inch pounds torque. So we're going to go ahead and torque those, and then we're going to move on to um, the accumulators because uh, it didn't mention any torque specs once again for what these should be. Also, a little trick is to put some fresh uh, trans fluid on the gasket, and that way it'll hold it down here, especially in these corners they like to pull up, and it helps keep it seated. It won't move around on you. Okay, so now in the instructions on part number seven, it says install the white spring supplied inside of the OE spring on a 2-3 accumulator piston. So what that means is like right here, that little white spring right here is going to go inside the coils of this one. Then you're going to just reassemble that on the... Step number eight, the one two accumulator piston it says discard all OEM springs, install the two large red springs supplied into the one two accumulator bore, then reinstall the one two accumulator piston, install the green spring, spring supplied retainer and snap ring. Okay, so these are going to be the two red springs, and then it looks like this can be your green spring, and then you're going to put it all back together. All right, so my snap ring plier. Uh you know, idea didn't really work too well, so broke the tips off. So what I did is I took a pair of needle nose and kind of modified them with a uh, grinder and just kind of put a point to them. I was able to grab it that way. And to uh, also make sure when you're doing it to compress the plunger in there while you're trying to get the snap ring out, because if not, it'll never come out of there. All right, so now that we've got the accumulator pistons done in one, we've got to reinstall the valve body. Here's your ribbon cable. Now also you have long and short bolts, okay? So I found online a, an image of how many long and short bolts you should have for the uh, valve body to be re, uh, reassembled or reinstalled into and also uh, where they belong. So I'll go ahead and post that picture now for you. All right, now that we got it done, we added 12 quarts, yeah, total 12 quarts of fluid to it. And uh, we're gonna take it on test drive, see how it does. All right, so the more I got into it, I really laid into it from the stop and um, it's still redlining by a hair. Um, I'm thinking I might be able to adjust ship points and whatnot and, and, and fix for that. But uh, you lay into it, man, the, the shifts are now. I mean, it's, huge improvement for over what it was so i'm thoroughly impressed uh altogether it took me about six seven hours just because i took time to you know make the video and whatnot too but overall i'm happy with it um as long as you've got a, a good day to spend and don't mind me on your back for a while it's uh it's not too bad but uh as far as fixing it it didn't necessarily do that but it did help a lot maybe uh when i install a torque converter that helped better so we'll find out now it's off to more tuning see you guys oh yeah and don't forget to like and subscribe